hello and welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh channel. Uh, if you like the video, do so down below and make sure to subscribe. Um, so today we're looking at uh, an important public service announcement about level monsters. I wanted to cover this card before um, and these effects and the conditions um, before we actually go into talking about the new armed dragon cards. I see this as a little bit more important. Um, this is something that they've been apparently waiting for about four years um, to mention. And I'm just going to actually, I, well, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to actually read the content and I'm going to try and break it down for you um, just to make sure that you understand. It says, hello all, I'm here to tell everyone about a possibly important detail about the upcoming level monsters in Blazing Vortex and how they interact with one of their key classic support cards level up differently in the OCG and they might in the TCG. So um, level up just means that actually um, the next um, next level to them is um, what they go into. It's usually written in the text anyway. So Arden Dragon level three will go into level five, level five will go into level seven, in the same way that your ultimate inset level one will go into your level three, your level five, and then your level seven. And then you've got your black, um, this Horus of the Black Flame Dragon, which is a level four. You can go to level six, and then the level eight. There are other levels and other examples as well, but they, those are just some of them that I kind of thought of from the top of my head. And um, that's just, this is the effect. Send one face up level monster you control to the graveyard. First will summon one monster from your hand or deck that is listed in the sent monsters text, um, ignoring its summoning conditions. So you're summoning it as though you, you've met the condition regardless. Now, we have this card which sends a face-up level monster you control to graveyard as cost, and its effect special summons any monster from your hand or deck whose name is listed in its text, ignoring its summoning conditions. So it mentions here, for example, you can send Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 6 uh, to cheat out Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 8. The new level monsters in Blazing Vortex are the first level monsters to include the restriction that you can only activate the particular effects of that monster's name once per turn. Before Series 10, which is Code the Duelist in the OCG, this restriction was written in Japanese similar to how it is in the TCG, for example, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Um, so you've got the Japanese here, which translated to what we use. You can only use this effect of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring once per turn. But after series 10, the OCG started to use a more standardized form of the sentence and omitted the actual card's name. This translates more or less to, you can only use this, the effect of a card with this card's name once per turn, which you might see often when we post translations for new card reveals. This means that cards like Arm Dragon Level 10 White don't actually list any monster's name in their OCG text, but they will in English if they continue the current formatting. For, le for level up, that means you can send an armed dragon level 10 white to the graveyard and special summon another copy from your hand or deck. You shouldn't actually be able to do that. As another example, armed dragon thunder level five has an effect that treats its name as armed dragon level five while on the field or graveyard. That also has a card name once per turn restriction. So there'll be two monsters listed in its uh, text in English. Armed Dragon Level 5 and Armed Dragon Thunder Level 5. This may seem as a good thing uh, for TCG players since it gives you more options should you choose to use that card, but it could also confuse players playing digital versions of the game that are programmed with OCG rulings. If these cards make it onto Duel Links, for example. This is a problem no one could have foreseen except us and anyone else who noticed four years ago that the OCG made that switch which they probably announced it's not for me to decide how relevant level up might actually be in an armed dragon thunder strategy, but this is also the same company that ensured, ensured you couldn't play Violet Crystal in your Crystal Beast deck, all for the sake of preserving OCG functionality. Um, so to break this down, what this means is, you know, your armed dragon uh, thunder level five uh, should technically be able to let you actually go into your Armed Dragon level 5 anyway, uh, because they're treated under the same name, um, and because it will be written in the card's text. However, this is kind of not mentioned within the um, OCG, so they might only be able to go into their level 7 version, which is, I think, where the distinction is being made. If there's any clarification or anything else that comes up about this, 
I will um, let you know. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as I've read and understood it, I think that's how the interactions are supposed to work uh, between the OCG and TCG. I'm hoping they will make this clarification because um, if you're in an international tournament, um, you will be using the, um, I think you will be using the um, TCG cards. And the worst thing you could have is to have any sort of distinction uh, for players just to avoid any confusion. Um, I would say once they've made a clarification on this, um, that would be a good idea, especially if they're intending to make other versions of the level monsters. Like I mentioned before, you've got the Horus monsters, you've got the ultimate insects, you've got even like these little treasure box monsters. There was a level one and a level three. If they make alternative versions and they keep kind of naming, they are going to have to make a, a like an official statement. Uh, whatever you think, leave a comment down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>